Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, it is almost time to cast your ballot if you've not done so already, depending on when you've seen this, maybe you've done it already, good for you. And the question might be, what are we to do as Catholics in regards to what's about to happen in our political system? Well, number one, we are morally compelled to participate in the political system. So that's number one. Number two, I'm not going to tell you who you need to vote for. And I would be very cautious if you had any religious leader telling you who to vote for. Because we don't talk about that. We talk about principles and then leave it to your informed conscience to make the best decision you can. That doesn't mean when I say informed conscience that it's just about how you feel about someone. It's actually about taking a look, in our case as Catholics, the social teachings of the Catholic Church. And there are seven of those principles that are outlined. You may want to check out uh, that on the USCCB website. That's usccb.org. And you look up the Faithful Citizen document. And this is, they've been running this every time there's an election. And they update their preface to kind of give us some more guidance. It's about principles. And knowing those principles, you will find that yourselves, well, if you read these principles, you will find yourselves in a quandary in how to vote. In other words, if you find yourself absolutely certain that your vote, let's say in the case of the presidential elections, for a person, and that is absolutely the perfect person, in other words, that person holds all the policies that we should have, then, well, I think you need to really do a gut check. Because every one of our votes for whatever candidate for, let's say, president, are going to be compromises because none of them espouse the fullness of the teachings of the Catholic Church. They hit it in one side or another, depending on what particular political bent you might find, or party, but none of them have the full Catholic teaching. So Pope Benedict actually was, excuse me, Pope Francis uh, was saying that it may come down to the lesser of two evils if it comes to, say, a presidential campaign in our, our system because he recognizes also that they are compromised themselves. They don't, from womb to tomb, they are not consistent in like, the ethic of life. So I would, when you do, when you do vote, and I'd encourage you to vote, consider your vote not as a perfect vote, but as a flawed vote, the best that you can do or the least harm that you could do. Now, be mindful. Remember, there's actually more than two candidates. There's many candidates I see on the ballot winning that are going for president. And that means you have other options as well. But you may find that all of them are not options that you morally can take, in which case you can always leave that blank. That's actually possibly the moral thing to do in some cases where there is a decision to make and you choose a decision and that could be not to choose either of those persons or any of the persons, because you either are not informed or you don't find that any of them hold what you want them to hold in the political debates. That's not everybody's decision, of course, but you know you may decide that, well, okay, so I don't want one other person to be elected, so I, that means I'll need to vote for the other one, and you are comparing the lesser of two evils. But when you've done your best, which again is not the best, it's gonna be maybe the best that you can do given a flawed system. And I'm not proposing, by the way, that there is gonna be ever a perfect system in, on this side of the world, right? This side of creation. But that as you make the best decision that you can, do so with a little humility. That means, honestly, I'm going to be offering an act of contrition and asking God, Lord, I don't know if this is the way I should be voting. It's the best I think will be but I could be wrong. That's where I'd be very cautious where people think that one candidate or another is going to be the savior and fix everything. That's not going to happen. It's never happened. There's only one Jesus Christ and only he can save us. So when you do then decide what you're going to do regarding people running for particular um, offices or ballot measures, do it with a sense of humility because we don't know everything and things are very complex. And we may be making a mistake. Maybe we might learn later on that was a mistake. That just demonstrates, okay, we're doing the best we can and this may not be the, the perfect decision. 
you're using prudential judgment to do so. Then finally, and this is really important as well, we have friends that we may differ with when it comes to the political parties or the decision that you make may be different than one of your friends or even family members. Oh, I pray, please, do not let this become something that divides you from your family or from your friends. Now, you're only responsible for what you say, what you do, what you think, what you feel, what you believe, what you vote, and you can't control the other people. But at least on your side, you can choose not to keep upping the rhetoric. We already hear so much rhetoric in the political system that is hyperbolic and apocalyptic. And somehow these people are going to save us? No, they're flawed human beings doing, I hope, I mean, I believe they're trying to do the best they can, though they are both, in the case of the presidency, uh, flawed. I'm flawed. You're flawed. We're humans. Let's not raise these individuals to be the savior. And after you've voted, be kind to those around you. Assume goodwill, especially to people who you may have differed when it came to voting. And in fact, I would be cautious if you have a conversation with somebody saying, I voted this way just to counter you. I mean, that is out of bounds because now you've ruined a relationship. You can keep this private. You don't have to divulge everything you, that's on your heart and on your mind. In fact, some things we say, we really regret often. We will say, oh man, I should have said that. It ruined a relationship. I could have just been quiet. Now you have to choose your situation, but remember all of this is supposed to be done in charity. That is love. Love that is compassionate, love that is listening. And even though we disagree, we're still called to love each other. That's a decision. And when we do differ with each other, all the harder that decision of love is and the greater the love it is because of that so that's what i want to share yes i'm not going to tell you who to vote for i want you to look it up yourself there are principles seven principles of catholic social teaching the usccb is the place to go for that you can go back to january and one of my uh, friday videos that i had i kind of went through some of those and i want to encourage you to do the best you can go out and vote this week or i should say next week and may god be with us Bye-bye now.